Good evening YouTube viewers and subscribers. Don't you hate it when you fail at something? This represents a failure for me. This is my Super Tiger G3000 engine <clears throat> and I had just recently, a week or so ago, done a quick look at this engine and I said it was going to be a box to the bench review. So, I strapped this to my test stand and attempted to do that box to the bench review and I failed. How I failed was I failed right now I'm failing to find the right hex key. I failed to get this engine to even pop over. I tried starting it by hand. I tried priming it several different times. I tried three different glow plugs. I tried my weak-ass electric starter and either my electric starter doesn't have the muscle or the battery in it is just too weak. So either way, I wasn't even able to get this thing to pop once. So I'm kind of at an impasse now as to what I'm supposed to do. I have had a G23 that I ran just a few weeks back. Honestly, off the top of my head, I didn't have any issues starting that engine by hand. But I don't remember off the top of my head if the compression felt quite as the same as this one. So the only thing I can think to do right now is my charger or my battery for my electric starter is on charge right now, but I figure I'm going to try and it may be too far gone to come back to life. It's pretty old. So in light of that, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to do a look inside this thing and what my theory is here is that I want to not totally disassemble this engine. I want to just <clears throat> take the piston out and see if there's a possibility that the ring is compressed enough that I'm not getting good enough compression to fire this thing up by hand because I know I I know I was able to get fuel in there because I flooded it and that was evidenced by me taking the head off a little while ago and t turning it upside down and rotating this through I mean this is what the compression feels like I mean it feels like it's got it but apparently it wasn't quite enough to actually start the darn engine um, so I don't know so this is now becoming a look inside and like I said my goal here is basically just get the piston out and see if the ring is compressed in the ring groove if it is then I'm going to soak it overnight and reassemble this thing the bearings on this engine feel fine and when I took the head off to clear the flood it doesn't look like there's been a whole lot of runtime on this engine so I'm kind of wondering if it just maybe requires a much stronger starter I mean look I've got a, a ton of fuel in here right now still too well not a ton but there was plenty of fuel in there here's what the back end of this thing looks like I mean it looks pretty good in there I mean the bearings feel fine so I don't really want to take I don't really want to take the crankshaft out and all that kind of stuff. I really just want to get the see if I can't get the piston out and check that. But you'll see when you see the top of the piston. I mean, it doesn't look like there's a whole heck of a lot of runtime on this. Oh, there's that little shim. Here's the top of the piston. It doesn't look overly bad. Now, if I have to get, take the sleeve out, I'm probably going to have to take the sleeve out. I'm probably going to have to go and get some serious heat and heat this thing up. So, well, I'm having a case of the dumbass. Um, I'm sitting here trying to heat this thing up, and this thing is so massive <coughs> um, that I'm probably not going to be successful in doing that, but I can take this front housing off, hopefully. Pull the crankshaft out that way and get the piston out that way. Oh. Well, sometimes you get lucky, I guess. There we go. I just got lucky. Alright. I was successful, very successful in getting this portion very hot. And it does look like that piston is compressed in the ring. 
groove or the ring is compressed. Let's see if I can see where the gap is supposed to be. I think the ring gap is supposed to be right there. This is going to have to go get soaked. In fact, I may as well just soak a lot of this stuff. I'm not going to soak this front housing here because these bearings feel really good. And it doesn't have a gasket, it just has an O-ring, which is a plus for me. So, while I've got this apart, I'm going to soak a lot of these parts, just not this front housing. And I can get this head nice and cleaned up then too. So that's the plan. Okay, so here are my cleaned up parts. They just came out of the ultrasonic cleaner. <clears throat> they look considerably better. This crankcase had some kind of weird glue and some staining on it, which did manage to come off. This I didn't put in there. The head was pretty nasty down in the crevices. It's still got some down in there, but it's a little bit cleaner. But the main thing was this piston. As I had suspected, the piston ring was compressed, and after sitting in the ultrasonic cleaner for several minutes, it started to pop out a little bit here. So I think uh, this is a pinned ring meaning there's a pin in there so it's supposed to be in one spot so I can't rotate it around but I can kind of push on it and I can kind of feel back here that it's coming out so it's free it's as free as it's going to get and here I am bleeding all over it so now it's just a matter of putting this engine back together as long as I stop bleeding all over the parts so let's see which side is the chamfered side. This side is chamfered so it goes in the front. So this is going to drop down in here just like this. throw a glow plug in here real quick see how much different the compression feels hopefully it'll feel different oh yeah compression is much stronger so I think that's probably what this thing needed was just a little that ring was compressed so, I also, off camera, completely disassembled this carb. It's a very, very nice carb design. Um, I rotated the spray bar. The spray bar, cat's eye, was not facing straight down. It was kind of facing forward, so this nipple was up a little bit more. Uh, the fellow that I bought this from seemed to have some Super Tiger, large Super Tiger engine experience, and he told me that... Uh, he just said that this thing usually works better if this nipple is pointing more towards the rear lug. Uh, that just so happens to be completely up and down and the spray bar pointing or the opening cat's eyes pointing down. So that's probably the default position. This does have a low speed mixture here, but here with the spray bar is the mid-range. So you can loosen these two screws and you can kind of rotate this fore and aft to adjust the mid-range. So. I think I've got this pretty much at the default settings. So let's go ahead and put this back plate back on first. Uh, let me throw a little bit of oil in here just for the good measure. I bet you I can hand start this thing now. 
least we're going to give it a shot. Not right now, but... Much stronger compression. Slide that down. Not too tight. And just for good measure, I'll put a drop of oil in here. All right. This baby's ready to rock and roll again.